We're here again doing another Stroke Buddies Stroke Survivor Support Group meeting. We do these every Tuesday, and a lot of times we're blessed to have guests like we are today. And today we've got Ryan and Anna Teal. Uh, Ryan suffered a stroke at age 34. Who's thinking about having a stroke at age 34? I sure wasn't. I bet Ryan wasn't either. And <clears throat> part of his stroke included um aphasia it happens to about one third of stroke survivors i believe somewhere between 30 percent and 33 percent and uh like a lot of people when they were uh, when he and anna were looking at um getting better they didn't find all the resources that they wanted that's kind of a common theme for us and another common theme for us is uh so they decided to do something about it so <laughs> I'm going to let them tell their story. So, um, Anna, if you tell us briefly about a little bit about Ryan's stroke, but what we're really interested in is, um, you know, your reaction to it, what what you didn't find, what made what motivated you to create what you've created, and what you've created, and eventually we'll get to where you're where you're headed with the uh, with the work that you're doing. So. If you yeah. tell us a little bit uh, about your story, that would be great. Absolutely. Um, well, Ryan, you know, as Ralph said, he um, had a stroke at the age of 34 and um, he had an isomic stroke and uh, it was a very massive one. So he's lucky to be alive. Um, it was caused by Eagle syndrome, which is a super rare condition <laughs> where there's, uh, you know, the bones between your jaw and your ear um, are, you know, supposed to be about, you know, less than an inch long, but Ryan's was like this. Uh, so he, um, over time, uh, that came in contact with his carotid arteries. And so they both kind of went, um, they were affected in a stroke. One um, went, you know, created a blood clot that went to the brain. And um, that happened one night around midnight. Thank goodness he fell out of bed. <laughs> uh, so nice. I knew that, you know, he he had a stroke and huh? oh, he's funny. Yeah. He was laughing, which I don't know if any of you guys have had that. Um, you know, when he had a stroke, he was laughing on the floor and I thought, are you messing with me? You know, uh, are you, you better get up off the floor. Are you, you know, are you messing, you know, so, uh, he, he couldn't get up. He had right side weakness. So I knew then something was wrong. He couldn't speak. Cause I kept asking him, are you, are you joking? And he couldn't respond back. So I knew then I said, Oh no, that's the second sign um, that something's wrong. So called 911 and we got him to the hospital and we were in rehab for a couple of months. But during that time, we found out that Ryan had aphasia. So there was a lot about stroke that we learned um, during that time when we were in the hospital from you know, doctors and nurses, but then, you know, this aphasia thing, I was like, what is aphasia? I don't know what that is. I've never heard of it. None of my friends had heard of it. Family members had never heard of it. So um, as soon as we learned about that, we started looking at ways that we can communicate with him, as I'm sure you guys know too, um, you know, and everybody's aphasia and the, you know, kind of wherever the damage is in your brain is different. So there's a lot of fine tuning that happens and a lot of trial and error um, that we had to kind of go through to figure out what's the best method to communicate with with Ryan. Um, and, you know, as uh, Ralph and I have previously discussed, you know, you're in the hospital, you're getting the therapy, you're getting kind of um, everything there, but then they set you loose and you go home and you're like, well, what do I do now? You know, uh, there's no like, plan or book or anything to tell you, okay, here's what I do to continue to get better because it's such a long, um, you know, it's a long recovery time. It's not just something that you, you know, you have a broken bone and you're, you know, you kind of rehab it and you're better. It takes years and years and years and years um, sometimes to, to get better. And so, um, you know, during that time, we were looking at ways to get Ryan speaking and, you know, ways to practice because he's, uh, he never really suffered from neuro fatigue, which I know is very common after a brain injury. 
But, um, you know, he was always wanting to learn and practice even outside of the speech therapy or PT or OT. And um, he was very driven, which is wonderful. So um, uh, one of our neurologists, he you know, um, he's like one of the top in Atlanta and he's been wonderful kind of giving us resources and tools when we'd ask. And he said, you know, you might want to look at children's books to see if Ryan can read them aloud and kind of get him practicing sentences. And I said, oh, that's a great idea. And so he gave us um, a list of, you know, kind of things that he would uh, recommend for us. So we picked him up at a local bookstore and started reading them. Well, they were great. And because, you know, they're simple readers, but the only problem was Ryan had a really hard time and he kind of felt bad about reading things that were just not relevant to him. They were very childlike. You know, they talked about your toys and, you know, uh, they were just, they were childlike. So even though he was getting to practice reading those words and putting those words together in sentences, they weren't really Uh, He didn't feel good about it, so he didn't want to practice as much, and then it just wasn't really relevant. So, and he he wouldn't use those sentences as often as an adult. So, um, we really saw the opportunity, and when we went to the University of Michigan um, aphasia program, uh, you know, I had had this idea rolling around in my brain. I was thinking, you know, what if we just did something that, you know, created a book that was really functional for adults, because um, not only people with aphasia need that, but people with dementia, I've heard, could use something like that. Um, a, A lot of different kind of conditions need simple readers on a more adult level. So um, we went to the University of Michigan to do their intensive therapy program there, which if you haven't gone or haven't heard of it, I highly recommend them. Um, They have a great team of therapists and people, and they highly educated me on things I didn't know about aphasia. So when we went up there for a whole month, they, um, as a caregiver, they gave me so much resources and so many things that I could use to help Ryan and support him. Um, And then they also worked really well with him um, while we were there. And so I had had this idea and I was talking to some of the staff there and I said, hey, you know, what would y'all think about this? Or would you be interested? I I actually asked them if they would want to create this for us, you know, and they said, you know, we just don't have the resources right now. We don't, you know, we don't have the time to create it. So I said, well, you know, what if we did it and you guys can just kind of help us and guide us along the right path Um, because we really need this. And, you know, after talking with some of other people who have aphasia in our community, they wanted that, too. So there's a lot of people that were really hungry for that type of resource. So um, we kind of made a little deal and um, started working on the books. And so, you know, with aphasia. Um, like I said, everybody's is different. So we wanted to make sure that we had a really flexible tool that kind of hit on all the different levels that we knew we could kind of help uh, on a broad scale. So we really leaned on them a lot in the research and development process. We did a couple of focus groups through them and um, we were able to create our first book. And um you know, like I had told Ryan, I was like, I wish we could just give these books away for free because I think it would be a great resource. But, you know, there's a little bit of cost to that. But the good thing is, is they're accessible. They're on Amazon. You can you can buy them on our website. But um, we we really tried to be thoughtful in the pricing and the development, making them functional because, you um, as you can see, it's spiral bound. So we wanted to make sure when you're working with them, if you have a weaker right side, yeah. like see Ryan, he's got um, a little bit of spasticity in his hand still that we're working through. And, and that's difficult for him. So, you know, not having a perfect bound book to where it's hard to kind of lay open and practice. So we wanted to have a spiral bound structure uh, to be mindful of that. So we really tried to be really thoughtful of, um, you know, the construction of it, to the the interior contents to make sure it worked for people who needed that type of support. 
But um, I wanted to be clear that they, these books are not replacing speech therapy. You still need to go to your licensed speech therapist to get your therapy. But if you're looking for something a little extra that, you know, to practice, like Ralph was saying, you know, you have to do it over and over and over and over and over and over to kind of make those new pathways in the brain, you know, to kind of get everything to connect. So that's, you know, really what we're trying to do here, because, I mean, it's the type of resource we wanted, you know, for Ryan um, and that he uses. But um, to tell you a little bit about them, um, aphasia, we we developed three. So we kind of we've slowly rolled out three and there was a plan for three since the beginning. But um, level one is more for a beginner um, and it, it has really simple sentences, short sentences. It's more one syllable words um, and it's functional phrases that you would use in your everyday life. So the intent is, is to get you to practice these phrases. And then later on in your, your day, you can recall those phrases and say, oh, I remember I practiced this. I can say this instead of, you know, texting it or doing, you know, doing or mimicking or gesturing. So, um, so that was, you know, what we wanted to, to do with these books is to give you a bunch of functional phrases that you can use every day and that can be useful um, on a, you know, on a daily basis. And um, so this is, this is level one. And just to give you an idea, um, we have a, yeah, that um, we have a session called Good Morning. So this is just, and they're illustrated. So you can see they have icons above the some of the words. So, you know, that visual support is really important, you know, to kind of help with word retrieval. Um, and that's something that has helped with Ryan and some of our other friends that are trying to you know, get those words out. Sometimes it takes multiple different things, sometimes gesturing, you know, with Ryan, when he says the word I, he goes like this, that helps him get the word out. Like, so sometimes it can be a visual support. Sometimes it can be a gesturing support. It depends on, you know, what helps you kind of get that, get that word out. But we wanted to make sure that we provided that in the books. Um, and like I said, they're fully illustrated. We tried to make them feel more adult. Um, and then at the end, we have customizable practice pages. So this is like for your coffee order. So you can practice being independent in the community. So you can say, hello, I'd like that. And then you, you write out your, um, your coffee order. So if you like a vanilla latte, you can practice saying, hello, I'd like a vanilla latte coffee, please. And thank you. And so that way, you know, when you go out to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or whatever coffee place you like, you can feel good about, you know, you've practiced this, you know how to say it and you can do it on your own. And so um, being more independent is, is feels so great. And I think, you know, it builds your confidence as well when you when you know how to you know say those things um and at the end of each session is kind of like what we call them we have some some little notes so you can take notes if you'd like um and then some of the sessions have like intricate um uh illustrations so you can describe what you see. So this is this is one about getting dressed. So you can learn functional phrases if you need help getting dressed. So for Ryan, um, one of the biggest functional phrases that we had was tie my shoe, please, because his shoes would always come untied and he couldn't tie them. Shoe. Yeah. And so he can say that now. He says, I tie my shoe, please. So um, that was something we had to practice over and over and over and over and over, but he got it, you know, uh, but so we had a whole section, but this is just kind of an example of something that you can describe like the curtains are green. So it helps you with writing support, you know, it gives you something interesting to write about and practice. So, um, so they, so each session in, in level one, we have six sessions that we call them, um, with their different themes. So one is good morning. And then the second one is dress to impress. And then we have one about pets. So you can learn about how to brag about your pets, how to talk about your pets, maybe to a stranger if you're in the park, um, and feel good about that. Ryan really likes, um, our, 
our writing um, picture here because it's a mess that a dog created <laughs> um, in the kitchen. So we tried to incorporate humor too, if we could, um, you know, because you, you don't want to be serious all the time. You want to um, laugh and have fun if you can. Uh, and then we have one that's dedicated to walking in the park, which I'm sure a lot of people um, with aphasia, a lot of our friends do this is they'll go for a walk and they'll try to describe things along their way that they can see, like um, the grass is green or, you know, a pet they may see or dog or kind of call out certain things that they see along their their walk. And that's really um, helpful. So we did a whole session on that. Um and then let's see what oh, one we have one that's about technology. So, you know, technology is really important, you know, learning functional phrases to become an advocate for yourself and telling people how you communicate, you know. Uh, so when you encounter someone new, you can they you know how to say that. Uh, and then the last session is ordering out, uh, which is important. Ryan has a local a restaurant here that he really loves called Taco Mac. He loves wings. And so um, I felt like going out as a caregiver, I would always order for him and people would kind of look at me sometimes like, oh, are you being like an overbearing spouse? And I'm like, no, 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 no. He just has aphasia. So I, I was like, we got to get you, you know, uh, being able to say your own order. So we practice and practice his wing order and he can say that now. And so we that's why we felt it was important to create kind of a a good like dialogue so you you know how to interact with a you know a waiter when you're they're taking your order and you can kind of be independent in that way so um and i forgot to mention too that the books are written as a dialogue so you can either practice like with a loved one or a friend or whoever but you can also read them yourself if you want to uh so they're very they're very flexible in that way and um you know since there's kind of six sessions broke up into a book you can either practice multiple sessions if you want to or you can only do one like say if you're feeling really tired one day and you don't feel like kind of you know, you just want to do like a little bit of therapy, then you can, you know, get in a little bit of practice. So they're very flexible in that way, which I think is really nice. Um, but, but yeah, they're just a great resource and we found, we found them so helpful and, um, we've gotten a lot of great feedback and, uh, we just, we really think they're, they're great. See, here's a, a menu. You can fill out your menu and practice too. So for the ordering out. So that's a nice little, nice little piece. And you can take this with you too, if you want, you know, to just have it and you could read it or show your, your waiter or whomever. Uh, so, so it's very flexible. It's just, it's a nice little resource. It's a nice little tool that, um, that we were just so blessed to be able to get to know all the right people at the right time and to get everything connected. Like I said, the University of Michigan, they were a huge part in guiding us through this process and um, trying to make it a really wonderful project. And um, one, two. Oh, and we, so we have, we have three. So we, we just released our third one. Like I said, it's a beginner intermediate um, advanced, but yeah, yeah but Level two is focuses on like grocery shopping, cooking, like you can kind of tell like cooking. So if you like to cook, if you like to garden, we have one for that too. So we've got a number of different, like we have travel, like how to be, you know, functional phrases for when you're traveling oh, and yeah. tips. Um, we have an aphasia card too. Sometimes it's nice. Um you know, Ryan used that when he was, he was in the car in case he was pulled over, you know, God forbid, but we have a little printable aphasia card on our website that you can print out and customize it and put your name on there. And it just lets people know that like, Hey, I have a speech condition and here's the best ways to communicate with, with me. Um, so that's, that's nice to have. But, um, but yeah, we've, we've, we put together, like I said, we've got, that's the second one. And then the third one, this one's a little bit harder. So you've got more two and three syllable words, um, sometimes two sentences, but, you know, 
we talk about like driving, you know, driving, we have the icons to support that, like how to communicate, like if you need directions, mm-hmm. um, we talk about how to talk about finances with your caregiver, you know, um, because sometimes like there's things that you don't know and you don't know how to ask or, um, you know, so we, we really did a lot of digging and, you know, surveyed a lot of people to try to figure out what are your common pain points and what what things do you want to be able to talk about with others and with your loved ones, your spouse, like whomever, and kind of put those together in the books to make them really useful and helpful um, for our phasia community. So, um, like I said, we have we have three books and they range right now. The third one's on sale for $29.99. They're normally $34.99, but a portion of all of these sales goes back into creating aphasia awareness. Um, Like I said, we partner with UMAP. So we give a big chunk of whatever we make off the books to them, or, you know, if we're doing a campaign to create awareness, we'll put some money towards that. But a lot of it, goes back out into, like I said, educating others on what aphasia is and how to communicate with people who have it um, or getting people intensive speech therapy because that is expensive. You know, we love you, Matt, but it it is expensive. And a lot a lot of the time you, um, insurance doesn't pay for it. So um, we, we're really passionate about that and helping others who are kind of going through the same thing we've gone through, help them, you know, get the speech therapy they need. So we're happy to do that through the book. So we just, we have a really big give back component to that. Um, and like I said, we wish we could have, we could offer them for free because I know everyone needs those resources, but, um, in that vein, we also have, some free printables available on our website on aphasiareaders.com. Um, and I printed out one to show you because sometimes when you have aphasia, it can be very lonely. Well, not sometimes, all the time. It's really, really lonely um, because it, it can be isolating. You don't, you can't, you, you can't speak to others and you, you might not feel confident enough to try. So, you know, there are certain social situations like, you know, birthday parties or weddings or baby showers or, you know, whatever. Um, If you're out at a sporting event and you need to kind of advocate or speak for yourself, um, you know, we created these really easy printable sheets. They're one pagers and they have a couple of functional phrases on there and it has a word bank so you can practice the words. Um, Here's one for baseball since baseball is coming up. You can kind of see um, you know, kind of what they say. And there's like a practice word bank at the bottom. And some of them have like lines where you could fill in and personalize it. Like my favorite team is, you know, uh, the Cubs or the Braves. Um, so you can kind of personalize it to whatever you need. So, um, and they're printer ink friendly, They're not going to take up a lot of your ink. So we tried to be mindful of all of that when we developed them. Um, But the reason why they're called fridge functional phrases is because we would always forget to practice. And so we're always in the kitchen for one reason or another and or coffee Mm -hmm. or whatever, we're getting something to drink. And so having it on our fridge helped us to remind us to practice. And so that's why we call them fridge functional phrases because (laughs) um, they're just an easy printable thing. And as a caregiver, I can say it it was nice to just, you know, have those or I could just print them off and put them on the thing. And then we just practice them and I don't have to kind of really think about it. It's just an easy resource that is available and it's free and you can use them. And um, like I said, we're always asking people for input. Like if you have an idea for a new like worksheet, we'll be happy to work on that and put it together for you and upload it on the website. So, you know, if you see something that we don't have, we would love to know that and we can, we can definitely help. But, um, but we've, we've done a pretty good job of covering (laughs) a lot already, but we know there's probably some other things we could, we could get up there, but, uh, but yeah, we just, you know, from our our heart, like we know how hard this journey is, like whether you have stroke or aphasia, I mean, both for the caregiver, the family, the person going through it, like, it's just, it can be a really tough and, you know, hard journey and, 
we're thankful to have such a community. I mean, like Ralph, you're doing such a great job, like helping people get what they need, the resources they need. So, you know, we're just so happy to be part of a community that supports one another and can help one another. And that's kind of what we want to do. We want to help others and make that process a little easier. Um, and that's what we hope to do with the books, you know, kind of give someone if they want it, that it's available and it's accessible. You know, if they want to do the, the, um, the, pra- the fridge functional phrases, those are accessible as well. And, you know, we just, we want to be able to, to have that and provide that and have them you know, available to everybody. We just really feel strongly about that. So I know that was a mouthful. <laughs> That was great. Um, Sorry. I came up with a bunch of things to talk about from what you were saying. I'm glad you circled back and mentioned that a portion of the um, funds from the book um, go to supporting um, various aphasia groups and 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 research. Um, another thing is um, those are really nice illustrations. And uh, being in media, I know that illustrations cost a lot more than the words. So I'm sure you had um, quite the illustration bill. Um, on the other hand, I think they make the books a lot more uh, dynamic. Um, and I, I saw you and Brian in a couple, but I also saw a lot of diversity also, which is yeah. a, good, a good thing because people like to um, see themselves. Okay, Amy's got a question, so I'll, I'll, I'll I can come back to this. I commend you um, for hard work and dedication and um, thoughtfulness, thoughtfulness and humor. And um, my heart is full, you know. Oh, thank you so much, Amy. That means so much to thank us. You. It really does. Good, good job, keep, too. Keep it up. I, I don't, keep I think up. that they'll keep it up. Uh, I, I was surprised when I got into this. I thought, well, okay, I'll help stroke survivors. I'm, I don't see anybody else doing it. And more and more, I think they're what um, I call pay it forward. There are a lot of people who get better who become pay it forward stroke survivors. You know, when you've had your life turned upside down, I don't know if it's automatic, but it certainly was for me. I I thought about like, how can I, how can I make this, uh, this is, this is tough. How can I make this a little easier um, on other people? I can't find anything about this. I can't find anything about that. I I need to round this stuff up and make it available somewhere so it's not so difficult for other other people. So I had a couple more things. Anybody else wants to you know talk or ask anything? Feel free. Ryan, either I raise your hand. No, I wanted to know if the finance module came out of Anna spending too much money at Target. <laughs> um, we'll say maybe <laughs> no. actually he managed all of the finances before he had a stroke so that was a big like yeah so that's been a big adjustment so he still helps a little but yeah it's it's been an adjustment <laughs> um, I'm a creative one <laughs> seriously um insurance sucks yes, <laughs> yes. absolutely sucks so bad yeah yeah i myself up communicating and um insurance and blue yeah. cross and blue shield and shit oh yeah <laughs> yeah shit is right <laughs> shit is right because okay. i mean we, we, I mean, I'm sure you guys are dealing with that. I mean, we just recently got denied a second time for, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have seen the Bioness equipment, you know, to help with your yeah. affected heart. We're trying to get Ryan one and for his leg to help his gait, help with his gait. And we've been denied three times already. And I'm about ready to go to the state insurance commissioner because it's just, it's horrible. 
Um, and you, you shouldn't have to battle so hard uh, to get the things that you need for things that you pay, you pay into it, you know, so, but we could get on that soapbox all day. <laughs> Polly? I've just been denied for it as well. And I found out that Bioness is approved by the FDA for spinal cord injury, but not for stroke or MS. That makes sense. It's advocacy groups. You know, we don't have a Reeve Foundation behind stroke recovery pushing the approval and the advocacy. Well, maybe we need to form one. There I you go. Agree. Maybe between all of us here, maybe we need to get one together because, I mean, it was just that makes sense now, Polly, because they told me that he doesn't have a um, spinal cord injury. And I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? I was totally stumped by that. But, yeah, it's it's all a racket. Thanks for that, Polly, because I wasn't aware that we were lacking that. Um, I, I don't want to pick on American Heart, American Stroke, but I don't I'm not thrilled with them in terms of advocacy or or anything for that well matter. for these illnesses and injuries it's not coming from the organizations it's coming from a face and a name if you think about susan g komen race for the cure so susan g komen is the name behind breast cancer research reeve foundation christopher reeve the actor He's mm -hmm. the name and the face. You've got um, Michael J. Fox for Parkinson's. It's getting that person to stand up and be a face and a name for advocacy. We need a Bruce Willis well, let's call up, now. Bruce Willis is, may or may not be a good candidate at this point. We call up Sharon Stone or Fetterman or yeah. somebody. Their, their names and faces. I recently found out that Arlo Guthrie had two strokes. It was not touring anymore. Oh, wow. So a I lot think of people don't make it public. Unfortunately, when someone recovers well from a stroke, they try to put it behind them. They don't want to be identified with the stroke. And we saw that in the election in New York that, you know, don't bring up the stroke. That's not, you know, I'm trying to put that behind me instead of embracing it and saying, I am so much better for having have having had this experience and it's made me stronger and it's made me better able to do my job. He may get there yet. I thought it was pretty brave of him and could be argued whether it was smart of him or not to do the debate. But um, uh, Sharon Stone's still doing uh, advocacy work 15 years mm -hmm. later. I don't know who the spokesman is, but if that's what it takes, then that's what we ought to do. And I guess uh, Anna or Polly and I can't be the can't be the face unless we become famous. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's that's interesting. Um, well, you know, we all get de either denied by insurance or a lot of people don't realize their insurance resets for physical therapy every year. Most insurance does not all does, but Medicare does and a lot of insurance does. You have to get a new order. You have to know how to work the system. And a lot of people don't know that or know how to work the system. That's one reason that we always say become your own best patient advocate. Um, I love the whole functional aspect of this whole thing, Ryan and and, and Anna, um, because, you know, it's like, um, you know, who, who needs to say this is Jack? See Jane build. Here's their dog spot. You know, uh, ordering a latte or um, or whatever. I love the idea of the functional sheets too. Also, you know, you could stick them in your pocket and take it to the baseball game if you had to pull it out. You could, you get. I've seen sometimes people get stuck, kind of like stuck. They they know what they want. To, it's kind of like aphasia. They know what they want to do and they know what they want to say in this situation, but they get stuck. So you could just point at it. At, at what you were trying to say. Um, to, uh, let's see, what else did I have? Oh, yeah. The um, the whole thing with practicing with the coffee and um, 
what Amy said. There's a, my friend Carl McIntyre had had a, had a stroke. He was an actor in Charlotte, and um, I hired him to be in a number of um, bank training films. He looked real good in a suit, looked like a banker, and memorized his lines and all that kind of good thing. What a terrible! I mean, aphasia is terrible to happen to anybody, but imagine being an actor. I mean, you're totally dependent on on your on, on your voice. Anyway, he wanted to. Uh, they made a movie about him. A bunch of uh, 142 people came together. I think I looked at the credits. I knew 28 of them in Charlotte. And they put together a movie called Aphasia. Hope is a four-letter word. I would send you a link to it, Anna. I would recommend uh, uh, watching it. Um, it's a real interesting story. And in there, Carl, he's dropped back to driving. He says a, a number of inappropriate words. It seems to be part of the whole thing, either between aphasia or or uh, PBA also. But he goes around and around uh, to the drive through trying to order, I think they call it a fruzy. It's basically a frosty. They had to make a, you know, like a milkshake into something that they didn't get into a copyright term with. And he goes around uh, about three or four times. And because it starts with F, guess what happens? But anyway, <laughs> and he drives off and he finally does it. It's it's like, it's really a powerful scene. It's interesting how something so simple as ordering, uh, well, it's also filmmaking and storytelling because they made it into like this powerful thing where like, you kind of feel like, all right, all right. He finally got his, <laughs> his spruce, you know? And, you know, so you're cheering for him. Um, so uh, I thought that was great. And I think humor is important. I know a number of, I, I know a stroke survivor, a friend of mine who um, uh, puts out a joke every day and recommends, you know, making sure that you laugh so you don't cry. Yep, um, it's good. So that was, uh, oh, and uh, yeah, I like the, uh, I really like the whole practice sheet idea and uh, and the fact that you made them so you could work singly or with a caregiver or um, significant other or whoever you've got, got to work with. Um, so I think, um, I don't know if you have a partner, if you have somebody you can do it with, I think that it makes, um, it's motivating. You, but you're going to both like, um, think about it and look forward to it and do it more than, you know, Oh, I got to pick up this thing and do it by myself again. It makes it more interesting. I think too. Yeah. It helps to have, you know, a friend if you have one. And I mean, I know with aphasia, it is hard to carry on the dialogue and to kind of think independently about, okay, how do I, interact and so it, I the, the thought is 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 to help with that give you a little bit more confidence and uh, comfort in communicating and holding that dialogue and going back and forth you know well there's uh, a theme for book number four because I was just going to say something about confidence um when I um, interact with survivors who have a uh, language difficulty either aphasia or actually um um Dysarthria is a, a big problem too for people. I think the the confidence is really uh, a, a big part of the issue and embarrassment. Um, I see the, the folks that are, don't speak very well are very reluctant to speak, and it's because of confidence. So there's your theme for book four or book five, <laughs> if you want it. Just Absolutely. you know, you could yeah. make the little stories around um you know people being hesitant and then overcoming uh certain situations i don't know i'm I just love that. i'm brainstorming here i love that we're open to any kind of feedback because like i said i mean we've done the three so we're just kind of seeing where we go from here and like i said yeah if you have any ideas please send it to us we're, we'll be happy to take a look at it and do what we can so you better be careful because I come up with ideas all the time and I overload <laughs> people. <laughs> but good. you can just toss them out the window if you don't like them. Oh, send them my way. I'm I'm good. I love well, uh, you know, you know that's great because anybody picking up book four, book five, who says building, you know, it doesn't have to say building confidence, but for 
just purposes of discussion, they pick up a book that says building confidence and they'll go, yeah, I need to work on mine as well as my language. Cause I, I, I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Who else we got here? Anybody? Uh, oh, my. Um, Kevin, you went through, you had aphasia, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I still, uh, still suffer from, uh, you know, it, it, like you said, uh, some confidence issues, uh, and I get stuck on a word here or there and, you know, and for the most part, people can, you know, not even tell that anything's wrong. Um, but once I get stuck, people are like, okay, what's going on? And, <laughs> and, and it's like, well, I'm just trying to say, and it's a word and I know it and I can picture it, but I can't come up with the word. And, uh, and, 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 you know, every, every, everybody stroke is different. And so people f fall on that on that scale as 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 someone that's got it real bad or you know uh is is could just be a confidence issue or uh uh just trying to brush up so uh i i i think the uh i think the books are fabulous oh, thank you there's your first chapter i'm stuck i'm stuck i'm stuck <laughs> And and a story about how to get unstuck, and maybe some phrases about how to get unstuck. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, most of the stuff. Well, you've probably found this, Santa. Most of the stuff is really uh, practical. I mean, uh, I bet your books. You know, one of the things I keep saying that I like about them is they seem very practical, and and that's what we need as stroke survivors: something that works, something that's easy, something that's practical, something that gets us from here here to there. So. Uh, there you go. I'm stuck. Chapter one. <laughs> but you could you could actually make the stories like around like you know getting unstuck. And uh, anyway, just some ideas. Thanks for that, Kevin. What? A book of games. 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 I like that. You know I. We love playing games and our friends love playing games, but it's really limiting, you know, uh, the games that you can play if you have aphasia. I don't know if you guys have experienced that, too, but like I really wish there were more games that were aphasia friendly uh, that maybe that's something we look at, too. I don't know. We started but, uh, from like oh. kindergarten level and build it up. Charades. Yeah. The charades, the is a good one. Yes, definitely um sleepy yeah <laughs> okay Exhausted. amy, amy yeah. raised her hand again go ahead amy oh charades um <laughs> voices of hope um incredible incredible voices of hope um it's incredible. Um, Voices of Hope? Yeah. Voices of Hope. Is it a book? For aphasia. Mm -hmm. Voices book? of Hope. No. Um, it's an aphasia support organization. Yeah. Aphasia support organization. Oh. I, I have not heard of them. Uh, have you, Anna? Fam family mm -hmm. game night. Yeah. They have, oh, they have yeah. a family game night? Oh, yeah. okay. We'll have to check them out. Huh. Yeah. That's awesome. This is exactly why you do these meetings. I mean, look look at what's happening here. So they have a game night after when he suggested, you know, maybe games. Um that's I think that's that's a good idea because you know when you do the gloves and the stuff with the computers and the apps and stuff, one of the benefits is that you 
they they help you pass the time or not pass the time get in your time without it feeling so much like drudgery they're they're, they're kind of interesting and, and you get involved in them and you're doing therapy but you're having fun playing the game and and therefore you don't feel like oh man here goes this list again you know this is jack see jane build there's spot the dog you know um so I think that's a, a benefit of of some of the um, computer uh, programs and and stuff. Stormy's got Fit Me, and it's engaging, and and therefore you're gonna you end up putting in more time. And and you know if you're gonna practice, 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 it's all about time, time, time. Uh, so uh, great, good, good job, Wendy and Amy. Um, Mike has had his hand up for a while. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's I'm fine. sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it reminds me of, I did uh, 10 years in special ed. Um, and it, it almost reminds me of some of the tests that we'd have to give, you know, certain kids on what they see um, in the picture. Um and, you know, I worked with uh, an autistic, nonverbal autistic um, child for, for quite a few years. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of different um, uh, support, um, support things out there to, to help with, um, you know, the nonverbal aspect um whether it be you know the getting them to engage or you know to vocalize what they can um, on what they see um so and that's you know certainly you know an avenue if you're looking for something something else um and it's not exactly the same um but it kind of gives you more of a direction so yeah that's wonderful that's super helpful mm -hmm. and i wanted to say that i think the fridge functional phrases are fantastic but whoever came up with that name you don't need to have aphasia to have a hard time saying fridge <laughs> functional phrases I know. I know. We need to figure out something else to name them. But uh, <laughs> it's kind of like, like aphasia. To... Who came up with that? Because it that's hard to say if you have aphasia. <laughs> you know. It is. I, know. I like the concept of sticking them on the refrigerator so that they're ever present. Um, you know, I, I'm a big believer in like leaving things set up. I I got a um um mat, an exercise mat over there. That I leave on the well, I pull it up. I have company or whatever, but I generally leave it down. I got my grab bars stuck to the counter. That way, you know, you, you got your words on the fridge. You know, if it's all around you, you you go, oh, that's right. I haven't done my second set of counter exercises, and you just walk over and do it. When you got to get stuff out and make a big deal about it, you don't tend to do it as much. So, I'm a hey, big believer in having it around you and making it easy. Yes. P.S. We just have to say that we love your counter exercises. We watched the video the other day and it was very good. Um, that was the first time I've seen anyone do that. So I think that's great. <laughs> I need to, I need to do more of that. That's an idea I had. Um, I, I, well, I had somebody I had a couple people say, well, I used to do it with um, I've worked with 16 local stroke survivors. Well, actually, Stormy and, and Brooke are in Tulsa, but I went to Tulsa. Work with 16 in person, 14 of them were local to me. And I'd tell them, you know, I'd give them their uh, work to do, uh, their homework to do, and most of them wouldn't do it. And I could tell, you know, I mean, I never call anybody out on it because guess what? I'm not your mother and it's your recovery. So I don't go there, you know. I'll never say to somebody, don't look like you did your exercises this week. Uh, it's demeaning and everything, but I could tell. So I started thinking about this and I said, okay, I got the answer. 
So I showed up twice a week and I stood there and did counter exercises with them. So, yeah. And that way I know you do it. I mean, what are you going to do if Ralph shows up, grabs, you know, wheel, wheels you over, helps you stand up, puts you at the counter, stands next to you and starts going, ready, marching, one, two, three. And I call it at their pace. What are you going to do? You're going to have to do it. So, yeah. Anyway, I started thinking about that, and a couple of people say, I wish, well, in my original idea, I wanted to watch my, because I'm a video person, I, and I did used to do Leslie Sansone, walk away the pounds when it was rainy or 100 degrees out, or freezing cold and couldn't walk outside. So I was used to, like, you know, doing some exercising, using the, and yoga also do, through the TV. So I wanted to, like, you know, watch hand and arm therapy on my TV and do it along. So when people say to me, you know, it would be great if you had something you could do along with. I went back and I said, okay, I got nine basic counter exercises. I I know you can play YouTube at different speeds. So I figured, I, I didn't figure that out. I, well, I, they already had it, but I went and learned how to do it. And, uh, came up with the idea of shooting them at full speed in case somebody could do it and then slowing them down. The cool thing is once you determine that you're at 50% or something, once you set the speed, it'll um, I also learned somewhere along the way how to make uh, videos play in the middle at a, a specific point by using the T equals um, thing. So I went and got the starting points of all the places. So you can actually, if you want to, you can jump around and do marching, knee bends back to marching i hate ankle i hate uh heel raises so i won't do them you know make your own program and if you jump around and click those links on it it keeps you at the same speed so you don't have to reset the speed every time so it worked out that way it worked out um better and i posted it once and it got some attention then i saw it um that was six eight months ago or a year ago I saw it recently when I was pulling a video for somebody else, and I went, "Yeah, this thing deserves to come back to the top again." So that's why I posted it. Good, but thank you. Very Winnie's good. laughing. Hmm? Why is Winnie laughing so so much? She has to so stop before she can tell us. <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't put you on the spot. That's okay, Billy. Because it's very interesting. It's like reminding others that the therapy is there for you if you're interested in doing your therapy mm -hmm. but you got to be determined yourself yeah 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 who's got the cow oh, kevin that's kevin's cat and <laughs> well, billy moved up there billy you've been kind of quiet today oh you're muted but I, I think you're doing a great job. And you're very positive, which is nice. You know, a lot of times people are very negative. They say, why the hell did it happen to me? But you, you're taking the opposite effect on it. And you're going at it, which is nice. It's nice to see that. It's yeah. nice to see a young young people like you doing that. Because it means oh, a lot. It means a lot. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That thank means you. a lot to us, too. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's, it's nice to see somebody cares. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there that don't care. I just want to add one thing here, Anna, and that is just keep at it like recovery. So um, you guys have no idea how many people you're affecting. I mean, you yep. may hear about it from some, you know, we I go around the room, make everybody say, you know, great things about you. I didn't make anybody say anything about you, but, <laughs> you know, we, but uh, <laughs> There's so many people that you don't know. I mean, when you sell books on Amazon, you don't necessarily know what the effect that you're having on, on people are, or the, you don't know how many people, or maybe you track it, download the different things on your website. Or, you know, I'm all the time shocked when people come in and, you know, they'll thank me and I never heard of them, or they'll recommend my, my YouTube channel to somebody else and I've never heard of them. So you know you're having an influence on some people, but you're probably having an influence on two or three or five times as many or ten times as many people as you ever hear about or know about. So um, it 
you know, you can get discouraged. At times. I, I occasionally do, but just, just it's like recovery. Just keep at it. You're doing a great thing and you're doing a great job with it. Amy? Thank you. Keep, keep it up yes. and forge onward. Right. Yep. That's the second. Well, Billy's third in it with his, with yeah, his head. Well, I like that you, you care. That, that means a lot. That means a, a, a lot. Because there's a lot of people out there that say they care, but they don't really care. When you care, people can tell. It comes through. Oh, yeah. Well, how else would you know it in a, you know in an hour Zoom meeting? You know, you could pick up that they care. You, know, you can feel it. Yeah. You can feel it in her speech, how she talks, how she feels. You can see in her eyes. You can tell when people are lying or are just, I mean, they just say it's, it's bull crap in you. You know? <laughs> Well, but Very mostly, simple. mostly what you see is um, em enthusiasm and empathy. Those are the two things that I, I usually, you know, make me think, you know, somebody's caring. Um, well, we've we've been there. We've lived it. We know how hard it is, and it's um, it's difficult. It's not for the yeah you know, faint of heart. So we we uh, that's kind of what makes us want to do more and you know to that's what made us want to do these books because we just we know it's needed so we um we're thankful for all the support we've gotten I mean because we didn't do it on our own we there's a lot of people behind the scenes that have helped us so we're, we're very thankful for that you still spearheaded it and you know it's the same thing with me I'm not a physical therapist you're not an SLP but you bring something to the table when you've lived it and yeah. the other survivors identify strongly with that. They know the difference between somebody who's lived it and somebody who hasn't lived it. I'm not saying that they discount their SLP or, or anybody else. Well, I guess what I'm saying is there's more of a bond between um, uh, somebody who's lived through it just because you can identify us. I mean, that's another purpose of, the, of these groups. You know, this one's educational, but we get together and and just talk. And because it's comforting to know, to be in a group where you look around and you feel like um, everybody's going to understand you. Let's see, I know every person here and every person here has had a stroke. No, no caregivers in here t today. I mean, there could be, but, you know... Uh, so, you know, you got 10 other people right now who all had a stroke. So, and let's see, we got at least uh, two or three with a had aphasia or language, at least three with aphasia or language issues. And guess what? Hey, that's about right in a group of 10, right? 30, yeah. 30, 30 33%. Uh, so, anyway, I didn't say hello to Angelia and Marilyn when they snuck in uh anyway <laughs> so do i don't it. know i mean uh all i can I say is keep doing go. what you're doing bye bye <laughs> i i support you oh, entirely you. great you, I'm, I'm glad you made it amy in a couple uh i'm also going to um i met somebody else uh uh who made their own aphasia um resources uh non-profit she's gonna have a national uh convention even i'm gonna uh, uh let uh, uh ryan and anna know about her uh denise lowell and uh we're talking oh, about yeah. her come on so look for that national or if you want to message me i'll, Aphasia I'll... synergy okay look for that one it'll be coming up bye bye so bye. Um, Brian and Anna, you know, I guess, um, I'd just say, like I said, keep at it. I, I, I got a, I'm not, no aphasia expert or I, I advocate for it because I, I, I know what, an, what, how serious an issue it is for people. And, you know, if I'm trying to help stroke survivors, I didn't go through it, but it doesn't mean I can't learn about it and, and bring resources. If, you know, 30% of our population is suffering with aphasia, it's, it's not something to be ignored. Mm -hmm. um, so the best, you know, the most I, uh, the best thing I can do is, um, uh, you know, Tom Broussard through Facebook, but I'll 
connect you uh, directly. He's doing some interesting things in advocacy. I'll make sure I connect you with uh, Denise Lowell of um, uh, Ask Aphasia Stroke Knowledge, and uh, who else? Uh, probably Doreen from uh, aphasia.org. Doreen Mendez San San. Sanchez, Mendoza, no, they don't both end in Z. And uh, I know a, a good uh, SLP that does different things with aphasia resources, uh, Dr. Carolyn uh, Falconer. So I'll introduce you guys to all of them. And, you know, you never know what happens when you, I call it throwing spaghetti against the wall. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't, you know. Look at Dawn Stormy Stevens and Brooke. It's stuck and they're practicing language every day, three years later. How great is that? You know, that's, great. that's wonderful. So I just, you know, I say I'm good at two things and, and well, I'm good at three things. Number one, I'm a plotter. I just keep at it. I got the ability to just put the blinders on, put my nose to the grindstone okay. and just keep doing it. Yeah, I get discouraged every once in a while, but I get over it pretty quick. But I'm good at two things. One is generating content, and the other one is connecting the dots. I'm always going, oh, wait a minute. There's the there's the title for their next book. And wait a minute. Kevin just gave him the name of the first chapter in that book. You know, so I'm always – so watch yourself when you – careful what you wish for with all these ideas. Because I have some no, driving down the road, in the shower, whatever. I'll share them with you. <laughs> And you yeah. can just toss them right out the window if you don't like them. No, or they good. don't fit what you're doing. Well, I think we should let Ryan have the last word. Thank sure. you, Aaron, Ryan, for coming today. And everybody have a great day. Bye, Ryan. Bye. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for coming. And um, Anna, um, I'll make sure that when I put this on YouTube that I could, I'll put whatever... Um, kinds of links or, or resources or you know whatever you want um okay. uh, i have some i sometimes put the story if i do i tend to put it a little further down so people don't get discouraged reading the story and don't get to the links and contact stuff i'm kind of sensitive to that i try and put the important stuff to the top or keep it short depending on what how much people have but I, i'll make sure that uh you know there's uh, clickable links to your website and anything else you want in there any any kind of content you you want because i think it's great what you're doing and hey if we can uh drive some people to you it'll help you and it'll help them and that's how we keep this ball rolling yeah that's great thank you so much no problem mm -hmm. Anna, i right. want to tell you something um, you got of course <laughs> <laughs> This is an inside <laughs> joke. Whenever I close the meeting, when he has a question, it, it, it never fails. <laughs> we started teasing her about it, and then I said I should stop teasing you about this, but she just keeps doing it. So I mean, it's like it's like shooting ducks in the shooting gallery, you know. Anyway, go ahead, Winnie, and, we're, and we love you, of course. Um, you might want to make index cards with the alphabet all lined up next to each other. And then whoever you're helping at, at um, say, for example, you want to teach the word cat. So you pull down the letter C, the letter A, and then T, and say the word is cat. And hopefully you can have them say it if they can. If not, have it repeated over and over. Then one day they will say it. But mm -hmm. then you put the letters back up in line with the elf, rest of the alphabet. And even like the word it, I-T. You know, you can start working it and then eventually build sentences. I you love know? that. I love that. Uh, a cool. lot of times they have little cards, like flashcards that say yeah. cat, and then they have a picture yeah. of a cat because the whole, um, you, you mentioned it earlier, and I made a note about the whole um, visual support. I, I didn't know anything, never thought about gesturing, mm -hmm. um, but you know, vi uh, visual support seems to, uh, and I'm, gosh, I'm no aphasia expert, but in the Carl McIntyre movie, there were some scenes with him with his uh, SLP, and she had some cards that had words and pictures on them. So I, I know it's um, 
it's a, a valid way of um it, 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 it must work the whole visual connection or, or they wouldn't do it and maybe we should explore the idea of having some kind of a group that that, that gets together to um to uh, practice speech together if if, if um stormy and brooke can do it why, why couldn't we have a zoom meeting like a yoga class or something a, a speech class I, i've had this idea for a year i talked to dr falconer about it and she said actually i think it was 2023 she told me last year she'd be done building her house in the summer of 2023 so how about that put the blinders on put the nose back to the grindstone and all of a sudden it's a year later <laughs> so maybe i'll circle back i'd I, like you, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So I think uh, it's admirable of you to. I mean, I have ideas and I know what I'm doing, but I'm not um, an SLP or or a PT or anything. So I like, I feel better like you did, probably going working with the people from the University of Michigan. If I'm going to put on some kind of a practice class or speech, the SLP doesn't have to be in there. But how about let's doing it in in a in a in a way that's proven to work. Um, you know, off the methods that uh, uh, speech path uh, speech therapists have developed over the years. You know, let's go with what works. Exactly. They don't have to sit there and do it. If they, a lot of the stuff, you know, I found like in helping people, I worked with a physical therapist, um, and his knowledge was invaluable. But I also found that he could come by like once a month in a lot of cases and. And tell us, you know, okay, you can drop that and try this now and everything. But mostly during the month, a lot of it was just me showing up and and helping the person do do those exercises. I didn't have to be a PT. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to learn everything about everything because the more I understood, and eventually he went away, and I had to start prescribing and figuring it out myself. And I'm glad I paid attention and asked a lot of questions all that time. Yeah. But anyway, so we could have a group that didn't wouldn't have to be led by uh, a speech therapist, but we would want to do uh, speech therapy recommended techniques in it. So, absolutely, all right, people, I think that's a great idea. Uh, so, if I can get that going, I'll come. I'll come back to you, to you guys because I think it would be something that would be you, you'd be interested in. It, it's maybe a little bit over here but it's you know within your i would assume it's probably within your mission because your mission is probably pretty broad like mine because i can always pull in something else to help stroke survivors hey it's part of the mission yeah so, that. yeah all right well i i guess we'll uh see everybody next time or thursday or friday at the other meeting so awesome thank you again Ryan and Anna, uh, mm. it's just wonderful what you're doing. Um, it's also I I know it's I know it's done two other things that you're probably aware of. It's really helped Ryan a bunch, and I think you found out somewhere along the line that it, um, it is in giving that we receive. Mm. Um, there's I'm sure that you've had a lot of positive experiences and helping other people. I don't know. Makes you feel good, doesn't it? It's part of the healing process, you know? It's it's a nice, it feels nice. Yeah, it does. So you like it? Keep it up. Will do. <laughs> All right. I don't think I have to tell you that. I think you're gonna keep it up regardless of what <laughs> I say. <laughs> I know you are. I, know. I mean, I don't know. A, a switch goes off in us and you know, I'm gonna keep it up. I'm gonna keep it up uh until I can't. Yep. We're the same way. Yep. We will do whatever we can do. So, yep. Well, thank you again. And uh, thanks to everybody for coming. And, oh, thank you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. <laughs>